Hello, I'm Daniel Shields of CultivateAbundance.com, and today I would like to share with you the wonderfully simple process of making wine at home. So today I'm going to be making an apple wine, one of my favorite kinds. I have a funnel, which makes the whole process much easier, but it's not strictly necessary. I have one gallon of organic apple juice. I have 180 grams of dextrose, and I have a five gram packet of Montrachet yeast. It's a very aggressive wine yeast that will ferment dry. So the most common form of wine is grape wine, and that's because, beyond just historical inertia, the fact that grapes have a particular sugar concentration that makes them work well for wine without adulteration. But because of the lower sugar content of the apple juice, we're going to be adding dextrose. And this, is, this step is optional. You can just ferment the juice as it is. However, you'll have a much lower alcohol content than you would in a grape wine. So I'm going to be adding dextrose. This amount will bring it roughly up to 10% alcohol by volume. And I've chosen dextrose because it's a neutral fermenting sugar. It will be converted very cleanly into alcohol by the yeast without producing a lot of esters or things of that nature that would add flavors to it. So the apple flavor will still come through very strong. We're just increasing the alcohol content. Now, if you don't have ex access to dextrose or you want to experiment with contributing to the flavor of the apples, you can use an, a variety of other kinds of sugar. So let's begin. It's a very simple process. So just take some of your apple juice and pour it into the container with your dextrose. And this is just because you want the dextrose to be well dissolved and it's much easier to add it to the container when it's dissolved in a solution. And so this is a very cost-effective process. It costs me under nine dollars per gallon and it can be really delicious and you have a number of options. You don't have to go with apples. You can, of course, go with grapes. You can uh, make surprisingly good wine out of just grape juice that you purchased at the grocery store. However, if you're a more of a connoisseur and you would like a better grape varietal, there are homebrew shops will sell you uh, grape varietal wine juices like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, uh, those types of juices. But the sky is the limit. Uh, my next batch is going to be a black cherry wine, which I think will turn out spectacularly. After that will be a lemon wine. Now, when you're fermenting citrus juice, it can be a little tricky because the yeast don't like the high acid content. So it's good to add a yeast nutrient. And what you can do, a wonderful trick, is after you finish a batch of apple wine, you draw off the wine and you're left with what's called the lees. That's the yeast cake that sinks to the bottom during the fermentation process. And so you can then pour the lemon juice and the yeast nutrient on top of that, and the much larger yeast population will cause a faster ferment, and there's less concerns of the fermentation getting stuck. So now I'm going to take my dissolved dextrose. I'm going to add it to my apple juice. And this is a, a rather large funnel for my purposes here. Um, I'm, I probably should have poured off some of the apple juice because the sugar increases the volume and not all of this is going to fit, but that's fine. And if you're using a the Montrachet yeast, it won't form a cruisin. A cruisin is a layer of foam that many, for, many types of yeast will leave the top, particularly beer yeast didn't have a very aggressive cruising. You can fill it very close to the top of this Montrachet and all you'll get are little bubbles. So no concerns with it uh, bubbling over. So the next and final step of our process is taking our Montrachet yeast and adding it to our must. I apologize, I forgot to get a knife. I will resume very shortly. So, of course, the, the item I left out of our inventory is something sharp to open your yeast packet with. 
And then you simply uh, pour it in. And if you're so inspired, you can uh, oxygenate your musk, and the yeast will appreciate it. You can do that by adding a bubbler system to it or by pouring it into another container and shaking it, pouring it back. But in my experience, it's entirely unnecessary. I've never had a fermentation stick with this recipe. It tends to do very nicely. And um, if you are interested in investing more in your project, you can purchase a stopper and an airlock. There are different types of airlocks. The central idea is you want to keep wild uh, organisms out of it, and you want just your wine yeast to culture. And so the airlock allows the CO2 produced by the yeast out, but won't let outside air in. However, what I do, and I've never had an effective batch, is just leave the cap on part way. And it works fairly similar to an airlock. The pressure of the CO2 coming out will stop outside air from coming in, and of course will bend the pressure just fine. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned, this uh, mason jar was well sterilized before using it. And I use uh, star sand. It's a, a no rinse cleanser. I, I rinse it anyways, but it's a common uh, cleanser used by home brewers. And so that's it. That's all there is to making wine. Uh, once fruit is in season, I'll show you how to take uh, fresh fruit and turn that into wine. But even that's a relatively simple process as well. You can also make wine from frozen fruit, another thing I'll do a tutorial on in the future. Now, uh, beer brewing is actually a considerably more involved process, and I'll detail that later. But wine, wonderfully simple, tastes fantastic. This recipe in particular does take well to aging. The law, if you have the discipline to take this and set it aside in a cool, dark place for a year or two, it is spectacular after that aging period. And of course, you don't have to brew at gallon size. It's a convenient size for me, and I love the fact that you can brew straight in the container it comes from. But if you want to invest in a carboy, which is a large container, normally made of glass, you can buy them of BPA-free plastic as well, you can make much larger batches at a time. Again, the process is the same. You just scale up the size of the ingredients relative to the volume of your uh, ferment. But one packet of yeast will be enough for a five or six gallon batch, which is the most common carboy size. So thank you for joining me. I hope you uh, make your own wine and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you experiment and try different types of fruits. So until next time, peace and permaculture.